Hello everyone, it's Millicent Trader with The Art of Being here. I just wanted to talk to you today about one of my favorite subjects in the world, God's love. I love it, it conquers everything. It's one of my favorite subjects. Um, so the thing about it is I wanna share it with you in dealing with Colin Kaepernick's um, protests. So how should we as Christians handle this young man who's protesting during the national anthem? Okay, first of all, let's see. John chapter 13 verses, um, let's see. Okay, sorry. John chapter 13 verses 34 and 35. It says here, a new commandment I give to you. This is Yeshua talking, Jesus. He says, a new commandment I give to you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, and that ye also love one another. By this, all men shall know you are down with me, that and that you follow me and you are my disciples if you love one another. That's John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. So basically, you can't even say that you're really down and rep Jesus Yeshua if you are not loving everyone. Because that is the number one way that people are to know who you are. Through showing Yeshua's love to all men. Okay, some of us are not doing that, especially concerning this young man, Colin Kaepernick. A lot of people give him a lot of beef and everything. But honestly, even if you don't even understand what he's going through, if you don't know anything about what he's going through, if you don't even feel what he's going through, still, your job is to just show love, no matter what. Okay, so... um he might, like I said, he might be a stranger to you. You don't know anything about him. You don't even know about whatever struggles he's even talking about. You don't even think they even exist. This is all in his head. Whatever, either way, there's a man who's going through and it is your job to love him. Okay, so it brings me to the remembrance of the story of the Sabbath. Um, no, not the Sabbath. Excuse me, the Good Samaritan. So that's in Luke chapter 6, verses 25 through 36. There was a man who got jumped. He got beat, jacked, and left half dead and naked. That means they, they didn't just rob this man of his cash money. They took his clothes too. What does that mean? That means, look, they stomped him out. They took his coins. And they said, yo, that shirt will look better on me. I'm taking it. Thank you. That's what happened. He was jumped in the street. I guess it was going down those days too. Ain't nothing new under the sun. So we got a man who's clearly beaten, hurting, and abused, laying half dead in the street, the word says. And then the, um, what was it? The first man who walked by him and noticed him was a priest. And the priest crossed to the other side of the street and kept on walking. Then the next man who rode by and saw this man in the street, ooh, she said, ooh, somebody messed you up and went to the other side of the street and kept walking. Then there was a man that came. The third man who came was a Samaritan man. That's just where he was from. Um, and uh, he saw this man in the street beaten half dead and he took pity on him. That means he, he felt sad for him. He don't know how he got there. He don't know what happened, but he saw a man hurting and broke down in the street. So he stopped and he gave him oil and wine and, um, you know, bandaged his head up for him, put him up on the, his donkey and rode him into town and um, found a hotel room for him, gave money to the innkeeper, said, look, I have to go. But please take care of this man. I will come back tomorrow. Any money that you spend, I will reimburse you. I promise. And... Jesus said, which one of these three men were showing their neighbor love? And of course, the answer is the good Samaritan. That's the one who showed love. And Yeshua said, go and do likewise. Even though you don't understand what Cap is going through, you still have to show love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Okay, those is that's how we should be responding to Cap. And then another thing about Kaepernick, a big subject, the probably the hugest subject, not just not knowing what he might be going through, but a lot of people are talking about how he is protesting. A lot of people don't like how he's doing it, where he's doing it. You understand, it's just, it's the flag. I completely understand that, I do. 
And so I want to read to you about the story of the Sabbath. That's uh, Yeshua who healed on the Sabbath. So Jesus is going, doing whatever he does. I'm going to bring the word out on this one. This is coming from Mark chapter 3, verse 1 through 6. And it says, another time Jesus went to the synagogue and a man with a shriveled up hand was there. And some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus. Now, a lot of people followed Jesus and that's great. A lot of them wanted to be healed. They wanted to see who this dude was. There's a lot of buzz about this dude named Yeshua. What's going on with the Yah? Okay. And Yeshua also had Pharisees and Sadducees that would follow him basically to hate. <laughs> Anybody got haters who follow you? I'm sure you do. Well, Yeshua has them too, but he had something for them. So it reads here, another time Jesus went to the synagogue and there was a man with a shriveled up hand there. Some of the men were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus. This is that hater rate, okay? Uh, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal the man with the shriveled hand on the Sabbath. So it's the Sabbath day. It's a nice, beautiful, sunny day. Uh... I don't know if it was sunny. I'm sorry. It's the Sabbath day. And if you know your word, everybody knows the law. You're supposed to chill and rest and not work on the Sabbath. You're supposed to set that aside for the Lord. It is holy. That's it. So they looking. Oh, I know this Yeshua, this man called Jesus. He's always trying to heal somebody. Well, we know what day it is on the calendar. What's he about to do? And they looking and they watching. Jesus look right back. <laughs> Let me make sure I get this right. Okay, Jesus said to the man with the shriveled hand, stand up here in front of everyone. Then Jesus asked them, because he already knew that they were there to hate. He asked them, so what is unlawful on the Sabbath? To do good or to do evil? To save a life or to kill? Everybody remained silent. They didn't want to say nothing because they knew that Jesus was right in asking. Okay, so... Jesus, Yeshua, looked around at them in anger and deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts, their haterade, and said to the man, Straight, stretch out your hand. And the man stretched his hand out, and his hand was completely restored. Then the Pharisees, the haters, went out and began to plot with Herodians on how they might kill Yeshua. <sighs> Lord. So here we are. Let's look at the football stadium and the Star Spangled Banner as, and it's not, let's look at it as it's the Sabbath day. And what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to stand and bring our attention to the flag and listen to these words and be happy and joyful and cheerful that we are in a land of brave men and women. And we are okay thank you so much for all of your service you guys are boss because i couldn't do it but you do it all the time and i thank you for that so we're supposed to honor them and but there's a young man cap who feels a little bit different not in honoring them that home of the brave part he completely understands because he has service members in his family but the part where says land of the free and all that cap goes I don't know about that. I understand this is your song. I understand this is the Sabbath. But I'm feeling some kind of way. You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and sit this one out. I'm going to take a knee. And everybody's like going crazy. We know the situation. We know what's going on. We're looking at Cap like, what's going on? Now, I'm not looking at I'm like, I can't believe it. And Everyone is looking at him like they looked at Jesus. How dare he? How dare he? And they plotted to kill Yeshua. Now, little did they know the whole thing about killing the Savior is really the whole situation. But they could not touch him to the appointed time. You feel me? And one part that I want everyone to focus more on is says that Jesus looked at them around in anger and he was deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts. He said in verse four, which is lawful on the Sabbath, which is the right to do good or to do evil? To save a life or to kill it? And they were quiet. They had nothing to say. Don't be quiet as I tell you to love Colin Kaepernick. 
just like Yeshua says to do when someone is hurting and someone is in pain and someone is in trouble. We are to just show them love, period, point blank. Despite how we might feel, our job is to show them love. Even if there is some sacred stuff going on, Yeshua is the Sabbath. Jesus is the Sabbath. He is love. This is what we're supposed to do. That's basically what I'm trying to say. So, um, so there's that. And, um, so what is love? Love is patient. Love is kind. There's many, many, many scriptures in the Bible that tells us how to show love to people. Uh, first of all, in, uh, John four, if a man, excuse me, first John chapter four, verse 20, it says, if a man say, I love God, you who follow Yeshua and the Lord say, I love God, but you hate your brother. You are a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he say that he loved God who he hasn't seen? Okay, so there's some things that you got to figure out. You got to work out. We're talking about being disciples of Christ. If you follow Christ, if you believe the Lord is your Savior, the Lord Jesus, Yeshua is your Savior, then we are to follow him. And I know that dude was always talking about love. I know that dude was always talking about that. And to follow him, it says in John 13, 34 and 35, love one another by this. They're going to know that you're down with me. It, it you know, <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, first John verse four. Hmm, let's see. First John chapter four, verse seven. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Okay, it's just so many scriptures. And the Bible says, mourn with others when they mourn. Romans, um, more scriptures in the Bible. Six, uh, excuse me, Luke 6 and 31, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. If you're hurting and going through something, you don't want anybody to like dog you out and kick kick you and hurt you and abuse you and put you down. You want some kind of sympathy, some kind of support when you're going through. It's like, I know you don't understand what he's going through. I know you don't understand what I'm going through, but please support me and love me. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. This is what the Bible says. Okay. Let's see. Just so many scriptures talking about what we should do. It says 1 Corinthians 14 and 1, follow after charity. Charity charity is aid. It's welfare. It's relief. It's assistance. It's support. It's uh, cooperation. It's interest. It's safety. It's release from any anxiety or distress. You're supposed to give that to people. Okay. Not kick them down. Okay. <sighs> Philippians 2, if you, if you have, excuse me, Philippians 2 says, if you get to be united in Christ and you get comfort from his love, if your heart has any little bit of tenderness in it or any compassion in it, then be like-minded, be like that. And in humility, value others' interests above yourselves. Okay. Again, you might not know what he's going through. You might not even care about what he's going through, but God says to value his interest, whatever his hurt is over whatever it is that you're feeling. Okay. And I know that it's super hard. Nobody wants to, um, do that. It's not easy. I've been called to love people that I, I a particular person that I didn't really care about loving this person. I just, uh, didn't care about this person. I don't know them. They don't know me. It's whatever. I don't care about this person. But God told me to love them, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. What ended up happening, me just being obedient and loving this person, I ended up actually loving this person. Not just in the obedience of loving them by God, but then I just ended up like, man, this person's really cool. I got love for this person. And then it ended up benefiting me back. You know what I'm saying? And God will work it out. He'll work out all your little this and that, but you need to obey him. And that is always listen to the commandment of loving people. Oh, man. Mm, let's see, I'm just looking for any other scriptures. There are so many notes. Um, okay, Ephesians 5 and 11 says, and have no fellowship. This is just a little bit of, okay, Millie, I hear you. 
Um, well, what happens if you hear someone else not showing love uh, in any type of way or hear some beef or just some dark stuff, some hateful talk? How should you respond as a Christian? Ephesians 5 and 11 says, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful. Okay, people who ain't producing nothing but drama. Okay. Um, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them or expose them or tell them, mm, I don't think you should be doing that. Okay. Matthew 12 and 34, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Oh, I don't know why I said that. Sorry. That was another, another note. Pray on that. See how the Lord could work on that for you. Okay, let's see. Galatians 6 and 2, it says, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. <gasps> Yay, that's good. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we not faint. And that goes back to me when I didn't really want to have anything to do with this person but I went ahead and I did it and it says don't grow weary in doing your well-doing and I kept that and I love this person and it says you shall reap I ended up reaping that loving that person helped benefit me tremendously okay if we not faint okay and as we therefore have opportunity if you have opportunity it says in verse 10 let us do good unto all men okay and I just wanted to put that out there because I know my savior and I know he is down with love, like for real, for real, for real. And, you know, Jesus talks about all the time, you know, you got to feed the hungry, help the needy. This is what this dude talked about constantly. So we're to do the same because we're going to have to answer for how we responded and everything that goes down. Um, where our flesh sat and where our spirit sits, we have to answer to that. So, uh, Yeshua has, what is it? Oh, Mark or Matthew or something. Matthew 25, verse 35 and 45. You know, that's when I was hungry, when I was naked. You didn't feed me, you didn't clothe me. You know what I mean? You have to do that for other people. Help and give and love and put yourself aside. Um Let's see. And then there's judgment for those uh, who turn their back on their brother. And uh, let's see. I want to say Obadiah or something. In the end, the day of the Lord, Esau, it says, will have to pay for, you know, the sins against their brother, Israel. You got to pay for how you treat people sometimes. OK, you got to repent. Say, Lord, I am so sorry for feeling that kind of way towards that person. Uh, help me, Lord, not to do that again. That's repenting to say, I want to do it the way you want me to do it. I turn myself and my life over to you because I'm over here hating or whatever. I need to show more love. So I'm sorry. God help me to do that. Because if you don't, there is a reaping for what goes down. Okay. Uh, the Bible, uh, what is it? I'm sorry, you guys, I don't remember the scripture, but Obadiah talks a lot about what will happen to Esau because of how he treated his brother. And it's not good. It's dark. It's basically a whole book on, yo, remember when you turned your back on your brother? Remember when you laughed at him when the enemies were getting at him? Remember when you didn't uh, give him refuge and safety when he was going through? I got something for you. You know, God is all about love and helping people. And we have to make sure that we put ourselves aside to get that done. Okay. And I know it's hard. Just do it. Just be obedient. Uh, and then everything else will come into play and everything else will be better. You know, more love equals more peace. You know, very good things can come out of love. That is, you don't fight your enemy through any kind of uh, fleshly way it's a spiritual thing so our job is to love okay all right well thank you that's all i wanted to say sorry for being for you for too long i hope you have a good day peace love and so i'm sorry that was the soul train but i love you guys god be with you bye